the weather is actually better than the weatherman predicts. How often does that happen? It never happens. And it's so, nice so far, and breezy. It's a good day. Yeah. And it's calm. It's but breezy. It's gonna be easy. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. But because I'm always catching the fish, it's easy for oh, him. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. So we're basically gonna be traveling out of the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be hopping across Florida Bay, mm -hmm. and we're gonna end up on the southwestern coast of Florida today. It's been such a long time since we've been there, and it's just such a beautiful spot. And it's like perfect on a day like today you have no plans we don't really have anything to do we brought a couple fishing rods and just gonna go out there have some fun got a lot of moving water a lot of current a lot of uh, nervous water I think that's actually bait right there so whenever you have current grass Pelicans crashing like that, that's how you know you got them. That is the biggest telltale sign that there's bait. What's crazy about this too is you can't get in here unless you have a bay boat. They're flipping everywhere right ahead. We're about to whack them. We're going for a long cast. This isn't gonna be pretty, I can just feel it. All right, we're doing good. With the power pulled down, that's gonna keep us from moving over top of our net. It's another great reason to have some type of anchoring system on your boat. Here we go. Baby, first thing in the morning, that's how you know you're off to a good day, baby. And then I'm gonna leave this net and load it in the back of the boat here to try to just keep all the mess towards the back. Many people always ask me like why I don't throw the net and this is the prime example why I don't. She's gotta stay pretty. No, it's not because I gotta stay pretty because after you throw it once, it gets all filthy and then you get all filthy from like throwing it over your shoulder like Clay is. So to be honest, getting dirty really doesn't bother me. And the biggest reason why is because of Veil Performance Gear, it's actually Stephanie and I's clothing company and we use stain resistant and moisture wicking material. So once we get done here, I can just rinse out all of my stains and the shirt is as good as new. And I promise you, people always kind of question us and they're like, you know, how's the quality? How is everything? You know, is it up to par with all the other brands? All I can say is just try it. You will not be disappointed. Being comfortable is one of the biggest things for us. I wouldn't be wearing this out here every day if I didn't feel good in it. We're definitely set to catch some fish along the way. So Clay's cleaning up the boat because it has to be. I did work, spotless, baby. Right? Got the work done. That's got right. the bait. Got Big the old bait. razor bellies. Mm -hmm. And now I'm taking us into the backcountry, and I'm kind of nervous about what's going to happen today. Are Only you nervous? Because it's been a while since we've gotten back there. Last well, we we fished we went, inshore with your brother a yeah, couple months a back. Yeah, that's a little different because he was captaining and he was taking us to spots. So basically, Stephanie's <laughs> doubting my captaining <laughs> skills. No, I don't know so much about that. I had seen pictures of people catching some pretty nice snuff back there. There's been and, some tarpon being caught too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, maybe we have, you know. I think we'll have some. I think we'll have some good luck today. Yeah, maybe we'll but have some good luck. At the end of the day, it is fishing. You yeah. know, if we were gonna guarantee a catch they call it catching yeah but yeah. we all know who that how that goes yeah. well some of us don't but that's how it goes sometimes we don't catch get them out get them out get them out get the rod tip low dude 
You stuck on something? Pull him out. I got him. Snook. Little got snook. Got him. Hey, at least somebody can catch a snook. Well, it's not caught yet, so. We're getting there. He's waking up. Nice. One thing is you want to be really gentle with these snook. We've said it before, but. Yeah, you don't want to beat them up. No. <clears throat> and just like that, look, he popped off the hook. Oh, the hook came right out. Look at that. Definitely not a monster compared to the one that we had earlier, but hey, it's that's not a, a bad way to start. Yeah, got him in clear water close to home. That's something nicer. That seems Is like it? a snook. It's fighting harder than... Oh, Ooh. big mangrove snapper. Wow, that is a big mangrove. There we go. We got lunch right there. I'll take him. We ain't messing around with him. He's flipping right into the boat. Look come at on, that. I want to see how come big on, he come is. On. Stay in. Stay in. We're fish. <laughs> nice. That is a whopper mangrove snapper right there. Good job. We're going to fillet him up later. And we're going to cook him on the beach. Yeah, buddy. And he's every bit of 12, on. probably 14 inches. Get him, girl. There he is. I got a little baby. Baby? Got a little baby. I don't think he's 12 inches. No? Okay. No, I don't think It's got to so. be 10, though. 10? Yep. Ooh, look at that. He's he's 11. Yeah, yeah. So he's good. over 11. Sweet. So if yours is 11. Oh, 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 oh I almost oh. pulled a clay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what my guy is. Mine's 14. Hey! Finally caught a bigger fish than me. Congrats! <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Uh, watch yourself. You're gonna end up in the water. <laughs> but I think at this point we're gonna start working our way across Florida Bay and uh, just fish as we go. See if we can catch a couple more of these guys. So we just made it probably about halfway across Florida Bay, trying to be very quiet here. Same concept as earlier. I don't want to spook these fish. And um, we started running past like one of my well-known islands for fishing. So we figure we got the live baits, might as well make a little pit stop. I want to make two pit stops before the beach. I want to fish this spot and then another little canal. But Stephanie's got the live bait there and I'm going to do some more live chumming. And basically, uh, the reason why these fish like to hang out here on this island specifically is because there's a deep trough. And then on the outside of that deep trough, you have a grass flat. So all the little bait fish, they like to get up on top of that grass flat. And then sometimes they'll come into these deep troughs. So that way they can come up and ambush um, a lot of those bait fish on the grass flats. And then we also have mangroves. The mangroves form as refuge, so it's kind of like that perfect little recipe for, you know, some really good inshore fishing. But the tide is really, really high, so we're going to have to live chum a lot to try to get these fish out of the mangroves and then hopefully eat one of our hook baits. Got something here. Ooh. Got a snook. Did hey you? Hey now. Yep. He's a lazy one. He said, no, I'm not. I love it. I love it. Nice. Now keep him on, baby. Hey, you get a snook, I get a snook. Right? Yep. Ooh. Are we doubled up? Yep. We both got snook on here? No. Yeah, I, no, doubled up on snook. Right. Got him perfectly. Hey, you can always count on a snook in the back country here. Check that out. Sweet. Look at this little guy. Yeah. Mine's a little bigger, but that's okay. It's all right. You're still ahead of me when it comes to snook though. <laughs> but that's cool. You can always count on a little snook back here. That's a perfect little size. That is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and release these guys. Woo. We want to make sure and do that fast because the sharks don't play around back here. Hey, <laughs> no. good job. That's awesome. Woo. Doubled up. It's always fun. So what I'm going to do now is find the biggest bait I can find in the live well. So hopefully Big Mama 
Here's what we're gonna do. We'll eat them up in the mangroves there. So real quick, we're gonna show you guys what we're using here. We have a seven foot Key Largo custom rod. And then we have a 3000 size reel, 15 pound braid. And then at the end of the 15 pound braid, we have what's called an FG knot. That is how we connect our leader to our 15 pound braid. And then our leader is 30 pound fluorocarbon. The reason why we tie on this leader is to try to prevent uh, the chafing that the snook causes whenever he's moving his head side to side and basically wearing through the fishing line. But unfortunately, sometimes it happens, but we try not to go too thick, but at the same time, you don't wanna to go too thin. I find that 30 pound is perfect for that. And then we just have a little tiny circle hook at the end there with a loop knot. Reason why we use a loop knot is just to try to give that bait as much range of motion as possible. So that way he just looks as natural and lively as possible in the water. So right now I have my fingers on the line and I can feel that pilcher vibrating. And as soon as that vibration feels like a thump, that's when I know I got picked up. And I have him hooked in the belly right now because what he's actually doing is he's swimming away from the tension. Thus he's going up inside of the mangroves, which is where all those snook are laid up. Oh, yep, there's the thump. Oh, that's a nicer one. Yoo come on, get out of there. Get out of there. Woo that's awesome. Oh, stay connected. Trying to get the rod tip low to keep him out of the mangroves. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's trying to get me wrapped up. Get out, get out, get out. He's trying so hard to go up inside of there, man. Come on, come on. All right, I got a oh. line that's... What do you got? You got a tree or a fish? No, I got a tree, but here, I'll that... help you out. I'll yeah, yeah, you. come get this guy right here. He's a monster, man. Let me see, do you think this... this no, 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 don't even mess with that. You got to put your finger right in his mouth. Get, give me him, bring him. Oh, this careful, is careful, careful. Oh, you know, careful. Careful, put your hand, put your hand in there. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get him. Play. Stick it inside his mouth. He's Stick it inside bleeding. his mouth. And he popped. Oh, Listen. Stephanie, that was a huge snow. I know, but now you know how it feels. <laughs> Sorry, I. my bad. I was a little nervous, not gonna lie. I knew you were and I knew he swallowed the hook and he was gonna chafe right through it. That's why it was so important okay. that you got that fish quick. So we've made it here to the west coast of Florida. We've made the journey cross Florida Bay we're finally at the point that we've been traveling towards all day, and that's the beaches that they have over here. But before we hit the beach, there's just this one spot I have to hit real quick, just because we've caught tons of snook and redfish and all types of other things up in here before this time of year. And as I can see, there's just like bait popping, there's birds, and the place just looks lively. So there's no way I'm gonna pass by this spot before I go to the beach. So we're gonna throw in a couple casts real quick. We're gonna see if we can catch something. I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, a little tarpon. Is it, it a little like. tarpon? Is it? I don't know, he hasn't jumped yet. He's right here. Is it a snook or a tarpon? I don't know. Oh, it's a snook. That's a nice snook too. Here, get that net, get that net. I'm gonna make sure to lose him. No, cause the sharks, <laughs> the sharks. It's okay. Careful. Just give me his mouth. Something's coming. Nice. Look at that. Good job, Stephanie. Woo! See, we had to throw in a couple casts before we hit the beach. Not a bad way to cross the bay. No way. Sweet, thanks babe. So I decided to beef up my tackle a little bit. I tried to tell Stephanie to beef up, but you know, like most wives, they don't like to listen to their husbands. I get it, you know, so I'm just going with the flow. And basically she's still using the 3000. I beefed up to a 4500 pen slammer, some 20 pound braid in a 20 pound class Key Largo custom rod. And um, same exact rig, except this time I'm gonna bump up to some 40 pound. I'll let Stephanie keep on doing her thing, but 
I'm gonna make some changes here. I'm gonna make it happen. Oh, Stephanie, Stephanie. Ooh, we got too many things going on here. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, he's wrapped around this rod. Here. He's trying to go right under the boat. He's gonna jump. Oh, oh, oh. he knows what he's doing. Oh, this one's on too. Doubled up. Now I drop this it. This one's about to That's jump. Good. Look at that. That's Ooh. the perfect size tarpon. That is too. a perfect size tarpon. Here, you want me to hey. hold them while you grab them? Uh, nah. Look at that. That's awesome, man. I'm just gonna keep them both sides. Nice. Hooked perfectly. That's why we got him, man. Look at that. Finally, a fish today that's hooked where he's supposed to be. Those big snook that we were losing today. The biggest reason why we kept on losing them is because we weren't able to get them in the mouth. Careful. There's a lot of sharks in here. Let him go on his way. See ya. Woo! Good job. A little Finally. water in the face, but that was all worth it. I'll tell you what, all these freebie baits definitely are making a difference. At first, we were just trying to drop our lines just with single live baits. And once we started throwing out some live chummers, that really, really made a difference. All these live chummers are just getting carried back into the current. And basically, this just makes these tarpon just go crazy. They go ballistic. They're going airborne, jumping behind the boat. All right, so here's a challenge with this one, is I'm literally fighting him on, light on really light tackle. Probably like a little 15 pound tarpon, oh, I'd you say. you think so? Yeah. I'm gonna slide back a little bit, Stephanie, so that way you don't have to worry about these trees. So that's what's so cool about what we've been doing here is we're strictly using our motor, our trolling motor, as an anchor. Yes. Careful, he's gonna wanna go under that engine. So that way you don't have to worry about anchor lines or any of that stuff he's when jump. you're fighting these fish. There he is. Nice. You sure that's only 50 pounds? I, hey, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> nice job, Stephanie. I'm just gonna clear my rod, get it out of the way. I don't wanna put too much pressure, here he comes. Good job, Stephanie, you're killing it. Look nice, that. yeah, that one's bigger than mine, I would say. Nice. Thank you very much. Just watch the Elvis movie. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the key but, is, is just the finesse on that light tackle. Here he goes. He's right it's kind of crazy though. You caught one on light tackle, I caught him on the heavier tackle. So you can kind of just see the difference. You know, yep. with the heavier stuff, you can winch them in quick, which is ideally what you want to do with a tarpon. But 70, awesome job too, man. That's so sweet. Look at that. All right, he's free. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh. Hook it, hook in my finger. There, there we go. go. Look at that. Good job, Stephanie. Woo! -hoo! Got a tarpon. That's right. Two for the day. High five. Woo! So, <laughs> do I want to hear? I hear. What do you want to hear? Do you need heavy tackle in order Ideally, to Ideally, yeah, you wanna have some heavier tackle, but of course, you know, I have to get proved wrong. <laughs> I just caught a bigger tarpon on lighter <laughs> tackle. So I don't know if you guys remember, but earlier, these are the mangrove snappers that we caught. This is the big boy, this is the 14 incher. And uh, we're about to cook them up, but I wanna make sure before we do that, we just take them out real quick. We have a little poker here. We're just gonna send that in and that's gonna take them out just like that. So these little snappers sometimes can be really easy. Just give them a little one-two punch. That's one fillet and just skin them just like that. It's that simple with these guys. Do that on both sides. Cut out a little rib cage. Give that to the sharks. Take out some pin bones right there in the middle. And he's good for a snapper sandwich. 
We discovered this really, actually we didn't discover, Clay's dad discovered this instant grill, my father-in-law, and he thought about us and like everything that we do and he's like, hey, why don't you guys try it out? It's all natural and biodegradable. So really cool thing. And we we saw some videos online about it and it just seems like it works really well from all the reviews that we've seen. So I'm excited to use it. But just for like a perfect little day, like we're doing today, cooking on the beach. I mean, this is perfect. What I love is how compact and small it is too. Right? Dude, how cool. There we go, there we go. I'll tell you what's awesome is you could feel the heat off of this little grill here. I have a feeling this is gonna cook fast and supposedly nothing sticks to it because these little, I guess, portions of the grill right here, they're made out of bamboo. And supposedly, and what's stuff nice doesn't stick to bamboo. Is the fact that we forgot silverware so we can literally pull off the top of the grill and remove it from the heat because we don't have utensils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're very under underprepared, but whatever. Talk about living off the land right here. Here's lemon to pour on it too. Ooh. I think I'll do that once it actually goes on the grill. Okay. This is a big piece, so I'll put this on first. And it's hot. I can feel it. A little bit of lemon. Here's more. Never hurts. Oh, we got more? I'm loading it up then. We're supposed to put these, uh, I was gonna put some rosemary with it. I gotta tell you, man, this is so peaceful. It is. Makes me wanna come back out here and camp on the beach. Oh, we're definitely gonna come back and camp without a doubt. <laughs> That's something I'm really looking forward to. This winter is doing a lot more camping trips. And of course, taking videos of all that. But days like today, man, you can't beat. Fishing was just unbelievable. You know, lost two big snook, but we ended up catching two tarpon. So for me, like, that was just perfect. And then just doing stuff like this, I mean, it's just the little things sometimes that you have to do. Getting here, it was a long, long trip. But now that we're here, we're cooking the fish and we're about to eat it. Once it's all done, you know, we have this awesome memory to reflect back on. And that's why we do life by the bow. That's why we're so big into boating and, you know, we love where we live. It's because of things like this. Moment of truth. Mmm. Mmm. Really good. Mmm awesome day too it's really it's all about the experience here in the back country because i mean as soon as you come out here it's just so quiet very little boat traffic and you know the fishing it was something awesome you, today yeah it was it's usually something we work a lot harder to do and today was just everything kind of went well and like it doesn't always happen that way so I'm really happy that it all kind of- Everything worked out. Yeah, everything worked out. You know, we had the plan of bringing the grill, mm -hmm. catching some mangrove snapper. Yeah. We got a bunch of snook. Tarpon mm -hmm. is a huge bonus, but you know, I don't really know what else to say. It just was an amazing day. Mm -hmm. So thankful to have you guys here. Yeah. But um, yeah, till next week, we'll see you guys then. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.